Hey everybody, it's me again, Adam Chapnick with the Security Token Academy. We're here in LA at the CIS 2019 conference, and I am joined by none other than Tobin McComas from Open Finance. Thanks for being with us. Hi Adam, thank you for having me. So, um, those of us who are in the security token space every day, we know Open Finance very well, but a lot of people who are just finding out about this, this space might not know about you. Why don't you tell everybody, what is Open Finance and how did it come to be? Yeah, sure. Uh, again, thanks for having me. Uh, so in short, Open Finance is a security token trading platform. Uh, we actually launched the platform live uh, in November of 2018, so the first compliant trading platform for tokenized securities. Um, and really Open Finance was brought about to solve a real problem in private security space, and that is a lack of an efficient secondary market. So we've been working in the alternative asset space for the past four or five years as a secondary trading platform for unlisted in illiquid securities like non-traded REITs, EB-5 visa assets, uh, BDCs, hedge fund private equity shares, really esoteric, um, difficult to trade alternative assets. And so the biggest challenge for us in scaling that biggest was settlement time. It's a very paper intensive, manual, redundant, inefficient, frustrating, really any <laughs> negative word you say, can say, right. um, transfer process. And so when we talk to investors about these securities, that settlement time of six to eight weeks is a deal breaker. They just can't have their capital tied up that long. So we started looking at blockchain a couple of years ago as a way to basically become uh, a much more efficient kind of clearinghouse mechanism to allow all the intermediaries that touch these types of securities to operate more efficiently. And then 2017 happened, and we saw a massive amount of capital raised through the ICO format, and we had the foresight to see that this was going to become a regulated space. And so at the end of the day, these are Reg Ds, Reg Ss, Reg A+, Reg CF securities that we've been trading all day, every day. So a natural progression for us was to be a trading platform and settlement mechanism for these tokenized securities. Got it. Now, uh, for those who don't understand, why is it quicker to settle? the way you do it now. Yeah, it really comes down to the process. So in uh, public equities, you have uh, basically the clearinghouse, DTCC, which sits in the middle and basically effectuates the T plus two transfer. So if you log into your Schwab account, you want to sell your Apple shares. Two days later, the shares go to the new buyer and you get the money in your account. Um, in these private securities, that entity doesn't exist. So it's literally printing massive amounts of paper, <laughs> stamping them with a medallion signature, signing them wet signature, mailing them the custodian. Custodian does the same, enters everything into their database, sends it back, then we have to send it to the transfer agent. And so if somebody at the transfer agent's on vacation, <laughs> you gotta wait. You got a pile of paper just oh stacking up. So it's just a very inefficient, redundant, uh, and manual process that makes it really, really painful for the investors um, and certainly the, the sponsors and issuers of those securities. So, um Liquidity. So why is uh, liquidity a challenge if we have this magic blockchain? Yeah, so you know, I, I think as we as we think about facilitating liquidity, mm -hmm. it's really a two-sided equation, right? You need the product or, or the securities, mm -hmm. but you also need the investors. Yeah. And so we're starting to see really good signs of demand for tokenized securities. And we've seen that since we launched in November. And with each new issuance that comes on board, we see a new group of investors who want to participate in that space. And it really comes down to diversification and the ability to own the types of assets and securities that people have never been able to own right. before. And that's what's really exciting. Uh, so that's one component of it. The other component um, is, you know, again, on the buy side. So as we prove out the concept that this works and we can, can maintain books and records compliantly on chain, um, we think there'll be more adoption from both institutional sponsors and issuers, but also institutional buyers, whether it be hedge funds or uh, broker dealer networks, et cetera. What about um, the, the question of transparency? Is that, how does that figure in here? Yeah, it's really, really important. Um, and one thing that we're working on with the issuers on the platform today and certainly issuers moving forward is what level of information can you provide so that potential investors in a secondary market can do the work and the research on your offering to make sure it's something they want to participate in. So historically, there really hasn't been much disclosure from issues right. of private securities, and that's part of the reason a lot of them have stayed private and elected mm -hmm. not to go public. Um, but we think that by holding 
issuers uh, kind of accountable for some disclosure, um, that will breed more interest and more demand on the buy side. So we're having those conversations today, and reception's been really, really good from uh, both current and prospective issuers. Oh, well that's refreshing to hear. I mean, I, so I think you and I were talking, and they're, they're, do, you, do you feel that it's going to take maybe a key player as an issuer who kind of sticks their neck out first and says, you know, I raise my hand and volunteer some information that traditionally other people have been like, well, we don't have to disclose it. And once somebody of some note does that, is that going to force others to do the same, do you think? Yeah, I, I think that kind of fits the bill across tokenization in general. And, hmm. and that is the more and more we can prove out the concept, which we feel we have done and continue to do, the more attractive this option comes to larger and larger entities. Yeah. So today we're talking about $10, $20 million private offerings. And as we get a few more of those, then we're talking about 100 to 200 million dollar right. offerings, and then it's 500 million dollar offerings. And so I think along those same lines, the more that we can prove it out, the more disclosure there will be, um, because they'll see this as a real avenue to provide that secondary liquidity to their investors yeah. that otherwise haven't had it, um, and it becomes a real viable option to going public. Yeah, not only that, but I wonder if there's also maybe the promise of a liquidity premium that makes yeah. people a little less tight-lipped because they'll get a boost in the value. Yeah, no doubt. The, the, the issuers certainly have a vested interest <laughs> in their shares trading closer to the NAV on right. a secondary market. We see that 30 to 50% spread and historically have seen that across all illiquid assets. So that's a real key component to the conversations we're having with issuers about tokenization in general yeah. um, and what that can do from a valuation standpoint. Interesting. Okay, so open finance. What you so new and yet so important to the space already? Um, what can we expect from you in the coming six months or yeah, nine months? Yeah, uh, the the pipeline of listings looks really strong. Great. As we continue to partner with the issuance platforms like Securitize and Polymath and mm -hmm. Harbor, who are doing you know a lot of great work in the space as well. Uh, so we continue to add uh, to that pipeline and we'll be adding more and more listings to the platform throughout the balance of the year. And then, like I said, uh, the next progression for us is to really get much more institutional. Um, and we start talking to larger issuers, uh, more in traditional offerings, uh, which we think gets really attractive to investors now that historically might not have wanted to invest in one of these types of offerings because of the lack of liquidity. Mm -hmm. Now we're bringing this um, you know, option that is much more attractive uh, for the uh, for the investor. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm excited to be a part of it. It's and, and I love hearing about it. So thanks for joining us to tell everybody what's going on with Open Finance. We have to have you back. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. Right. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Tobin.